you have a career or if you have a good family or if you have a lot of money or if you are famous, what does that mean? That you are well? That you are not at risk? Nobody knows. seekers during the last week three different persons have told me that they or their loved ones have been through depression and suicidal thoughts I personally have been in a chronic state of mild depression almost my whole adolescence and early childhood but there was a problem I didn't know that I was depressed. It was until two years ago, when the pandemic just was starting, that I had a crisis that made me think about going to a specialist to be evaluated. Since then, I have felt very relieved to realize that the continuous sadness and unful unfulfillment I felt during my adolescence may have had a name that is called dysthymia a type of mild chronic depression. Although meeting Jesus in my life healed me of a nonsense life and purpose of life, I recognize now that going to good psychologists and psychiatrists have been a humble decision that I'm proud of and has improved my quality of life and ability to deal with daily conflicts. The most common greeting in Chile is como estai? That is, how are you? And the answer is 99.99% .99 the same. Bien, that is good. I was part of the 0.01% that sometimes said mal, that is bad, no, not too good. And the reply from the greeter is super, that means great. What? He didn't hear me? I said I am no good. That is funny, but reflect that we are no good listeners, or we are not open to hear something different and expected. There was a situation in a WhatsApp group that made me reflect more about our deafness and blindness, about how really others are feeling. In the chat, someone shared the bad news that one of the neighbors has killed himself and had left a wife and baby of months. Someone in the chat asked if he had had problems. Another person that knew him replied, No, he had no problems, he was fine. That question and the reply struck me up. How can we even think a person who killed himself was not struggling with problems? or some type of distress or depression. We can be so blind that we probably only see what we want to see, the surface. If you have a career, or if you have a good family, or if you have a lot of money, or if you are famous, what does that mean? That you are well? That you are not at risk? Nobody knows what is happening inside anyone. But someone does know. That is what I want to highlight in this passage. The story of Jesus healing the paralytic who was carried by his friends. It is found in three of the Gospels, in Matthew 9, Mark 2, and Luke 5. I will read it in Luke 5, 17 to 26. One day Jesus was teaching a Pharisee, a teacher of the law, were sitting there. He had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and 
tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw the faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teacher of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, We have seen remarkable things today. What did happen here? Jesus saw the paralytic as the others. The house was full and there were people looking from outside too. The man can't walk and is transported by his friends on a mat. Jesus seems to not see what the others see. If you find a paralytic and you are a miraculous healer, it is obvious that is seeking to be healed, cured of the paralysis. But rather, Jesus said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. What? How can you see the soul of that man? How can you know his sins? How can you see how guilty that man may feel for something for which he hasn't forgiven himself? How can you know whether the heavier burden he was bearing was not to be crippled, but to be unable to live without peace. Only Jesus sees what is covered to the human eye. When you see a kid misbehaving on the street and when you see someone taking drugs or alcohol, do you know the story, the soul, the weight or the burdens? We tend to judge easily because of the appearances. But God sees the heart. The obvious thing is to think about professionals, rehab, therapists, but wouldn't it be worth it also to try as Jesus did and go to the spiritual doctor, go to the healer first? Then it may be easy to decide to go to a therapist and seek help for your problem. This story reminds me of when I was paralytic, I was mute, I was deaf, yes, I was not able to walk in faith, to hope for more, to seek more, I was not able to think beyond my little world, but I met a healer, an specialist. He gave me the peace that I needed. He looked at me as nobody had looked at me before. Knowing me perfectly, not only on the surface as the others, and hugging me. That changed my life because from that moment I started to crawl, then walk, and then run. And I was mute, and now I can speak <laughs> even a little in English. I had plenty of insecurities, and now I feel confidence in my gifts. I was dependent of the approval of others, and now I am free. Although sometimes I relapse, I confess. <laughs> that is the resume of this healer. Do you think it is worth making an appointment with him? 
I totally recommend it. Do not be afraid of the cost or the consequences because all is free, all is good. Be happy.